before we uh, start our presentation from um, uh, Via Benefits, just wanted to know that the PowerPoint that they're going to be giving us today, uh, we do have access to that, and that also will be put onto the NCRO website on the um, Insurance Committee's uh, uh, page, which is labeled HRA and RHCA. So you just should be able to click on that from the home page to the uh, healthcare and Medicare uh, page and should be able to find the link there to the presentation you're about to uh, see today. So um, we'd like to uh, thank uh, Stephen Durso from uh, Willis Towards Watson to, uh, for joining us today. Um, Stephen leads the client services team for VIA Benefit accounts. Uh, in this role, he provides leadership support for implementations and ongoing delivery. He has more than a 20 years uh, ben of benefits experience, working in multiple roles, including customer service, project management, people management, and client management. So a lot of management. Um, his focus over the last 15 years has been on account-based plans, including all age aspects of, and this is a whole acronym soup here, HRAs, which are health retirement accounts, HSAs, health savings accounts, and FSAs, flexible spending accounts. Stephen is committed to finding and executing on solutions for his clients in all areas uh, of all areas of accounts. Stephen holds a uh, degree in marketing and information systems from uh, the University of Central Florida. So we welcome Stephen to NCRO. Oh, well, thank you. I mean, and actually, you know, before I get started, um, Aaron, were you going to say a few words? Yes, good afternoon. Um, I wanted to just take a moment to briefly introduce myself. Um, my name is Erin O'Connor, and I'm a client service delivery team lead with Willis Towers Watson, and I represent our health and welfare line of business. Um, so our area is accountable for the overseeing of Stellantis benefit eligibility, enrollment, and day-to-day -day administration. So I recognize that my name and my face is likely something not familiar to this audience before, but I've been working very closely and partnering with Skip Trulier, who many of you may be familiar with based on his participation in past meetings. So I wanted to share that it's with mixed emotions that Skip has made a decision to leave us at Willis Towers Watson for a new and exciting venture, which is actually his retirement. So while we're very sad to see him leave, we're very excited. Um, to see him join and move into this new chapter of his life. So I'm very happy to be able to join you all today. I look forward to today's presentation as well as opportunities to present, pr participate in these meetings in the future. So with that, I just, I know Stephen's already had a great introduction. So I'll turn it over to Stephen who will lead us through um, this administration overview. All right, thanks so much, Aaron. And I am ready to go. Can uh, you guys just confirm you can hear me? I can hear you. Yes, Stephen. we can hear you, Stephen. Okay, excellent. Uh, and uh, so today I'm here to go over the HRA and the RICA Claims Administration. So we are new via benefits accounts, and um, we are here to serve you. I think that's the first thing I would just like you to know. And um, we already went through my intro. Um, I think a couple other things that I would like to say about myself just to add on to that is I've worked with over 100 retiree clients in the past. And uh, I'm really dedicated to that customer service. So, you know, I started my career over 20 years ago um, in, the, in that seat of being a customer service representative. It's one of the most challenging jobs, uh, but I still keep that and I drive that throughout my organization that we are here to help. And uh, for, uh, for the Chrysler organization, our job is to help, um, help allow you to access your funds in an easy manner. So everything that we do is really tied back to that. Um, and that that is exactly what we do. So who is VIA Benefits Accounts? Like I said, we are helpers. So we're here to help you to access your funds in your accounts. And effective January 1st, 2022, VIA Benefits Accounts is the administrator for the healthcare retirement account and the retirement healthcare account. So throughout the rest of this presentation, I'll just refer to those as HRA and RICA. Um, I know there are a lot of acronyms, so I'll try to avoid them as much as possible. 
this is our agenda. So these are the things that I plan on covering with you today. Um, I know we'll also be taking questions. And uh, the first thing we're going to go over is the portal, so the website and the mobile application. What do you do um, if you don't already have an account? Is there a mobile app? There certainly is. How do you log in using the mobile app? Next, we'll jump into the claims process. So this is your process for getting access to your funds. I will talk a little bit about the balance for RICA claims. I'll show you how to submit a claim. Uh, I'll give you some pointers on what we would be looking for as far as supporting documentation. I, I'll give you an idea of where you can find a list of eligible expenses, and then a number of additional things that are tied to claims. Next, we'll talk a little bit more about direct deposit. That's a very important topic for today. And then last, I'm gonna show you some other ways where you can get assistance. So I'll be helping you in this presentation, but then we also have a team of representatives who are ready to assist at any time. So we'll be going over that as well. All right, so the first thing is how do you get to our portal and the mobile application? So let me show you that. This screen here may look familiar to you. So this is Benefit Connect, um, and you've had access to this for a while. Uh, there's a new link on this on this Benefit Connect portal that will take you directly into the Via Benefits Accounts portal. So if you go here and you click on this link that I have um, kind of outlined in a red box, that will take you directly into Via Benefits Accounts. You won't have to enter any additional passwords. You will just be right there. So that is one of the ways that you can get to our portal. Another way that you can get there is to go direct to viabenefitsaccounts.com. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit more. We don't want you going to viabenefits.com because that's actually going to take you to our Medicare marketplace for enrollment and plans. What you always want to think about is the accounts is very important that you add that to the web address. So viabenefitsaccounts.com is our direct web address. If you're a returning user and you're coming to this, you would simply just add your email address in here. So when you add your email address, it will then take you to the screen to add your password. But if you're a brand new user, what you're going to do is you'll click right here on create account and it will take you to the next screen. So on the next screen, what it's going to do is it will ask for your social security number. So you, we want you to enter your social security number and then hit continue. So after you do that, it will ask you for a little bit more information. So you were gonna ask for your date of birth and zip code in addition to your SSN. Then you'll be prompted to enter your email address as your user ID. Next, you'll be prompted to create and verify a secure password. So what's gonna happen after that is after you sign in, you will get a code via email that you'll need to enter. And you're gonna going to be asked for a secondary contact method um, normally, that would be uh, your, your, your mobile phone, just to ensure account security. And you can always update these settings at any time on the VIA Benefits Accounts mobile app or on our website. All right, so now that you've gone through that simple process of setting up your account, um, you're ready to view your account, set your notification preferences, and then also what we're going to focus on today is entering your direct deposit information. All right, we have received some questions about, uh, well, do you guys have a mobile application? You know what, I'm always on the go. Um, I'm, not, I'm not usually using computers. I just, uh, maybe I'm in Hawaii, I have my phone on me. We certainly do have a mobile application. And almost all of the things that you can do on the, the online portal, you can also do on the mobile application. So if you go to the, um, the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, um, if you search for Via Benefits Accounts, it will come up. So via benefits accounts will provide you with the, uh, the mobile application. And then the login and the password is going to be very similar and it will be the same one that you used for the portal. So showing that a little bit, um, if you're someone who has never been to our online portal, um, you would actually do the same thing that we just talked about on the, um, on the, uh, the website, you could actually do it on the portal. So you could create your new account directly on the, uh, the mobile application. All right, so we've we've gotten to the site. We are we're getting used to using the mobile application. Um, now for the important part: how do we process claims? 
and, um, and everything related to that. So the first thing I'd like to go over is just a little bit about the RICA. So your available balance for RICA claims. So this really has not changed at all. So this has been in place for a while. Um, this was not a change with the VIA benefits accounts transition, uh, but you can check the available funds in your RICA, which is managed by Merrill, a Bank of America company, at benefits.ml.com. Or you can call them at 1-800-483-SAVE, which is 7283. Uh, there is an important step that you have to take uh, prior to requesting reimbursement for a RICA claim. And in order to do, in order to get funds from your RICA, you must have requested the amount in your Merrill Institutional Money Market 2 fund, or you need to transfer enough funds into that fund to be able to cover the amount requested prior to submitting your reimbursement requests. Um, and reimbursement requests from your RICA are going to be processed weekly. So if you don't have the funds, uh, the available funds in that fund at the time that we submit a RICA reimbursement, then, then we are unable to reimburse you. Now, what I would say is when you go to our portal, you'll see a little screenshot on the right here. Um, you'll see what, where we're not actually showing your balance. Um, and, and that's because we, we don't store your balance and you can always call um, or go to Merrill's site to actually see your balance. And we give you that phone number directly on our portal as well, in case you did not have it handy. Okay, and then you can request reimbursement from your RICA as well as track its status through our website or on the VIA Benefits Accounts mobile app. Um, if you do choose to be reimbursed from your RICA only, and we talked about this a minute ago, but there's not sufficient funds in your Merrill Institutional Money Market 2 fund, that reimbursement request would be denied and you would need to submit a new one. All right, on this next slide, uh, digging in a little, little bit more into the RICA, I'm just trying to give you a little bit of a claims timeline on how RICA works. So RICA does take a little bit more time to process because we have to work with, um, with Merrill just to confirm your balance, and then they actually send the funds to us so that we can reimburse you. So this is just um, getting into an example of a weekly RICA cycle. Um, let's say that um, you first took the action to move the appropriate funds um, in your Merrill account, so they're ready for reimbursement. And then you submitted a RICA claim to VIA Benefits Accounts. Um, if we just approve that claim today, let's use that for example, today being a Wednesday, uh, what, we're, what we're going to do in that case is we will send that claim to Merrill on Thursday for confirmation of balance. They will send it back to us on Friday, letting us know if there's enough of a balance to pay that claim. Um, and if there is, we will let them know on Monday that to move forward with that claim, um, they will then send us the funds and the following Monday that claim will be paid out to you. So it does take a little bit more time uh, to go through this cycle, uh, but that that is how that works. And the, the key part here is just to make sure um, that before you request the funds from VIA Benefits that you've already moved the, the monies, um, as we talked about on the last slide, um, into your institutional money market to fund. Okay, so then another pointer here is mailed versus electronic claims. So one thing we would just like to point out is that if, if you do want to fill out a paper claim form, we do make that available for you. Um, that's per perfectly acceptable for you to do that. Um, however, if you mail that to us, uh, we know that it could take up to 10 days for, for that to be received. Um, and we're unable to process it until we receive that mail. So we do recommend if you're going to send a paper claim form in, another way you could do that is via fax, um, or even better, if you go to our portal that we just talked about or our mobile application and submit your, your reimbursement request electronically, uh, we're able to start processing it immediately and um, it would be processed and reviewed within two business days. So that's going to be your best bet for, uh, for speeding up this process. Okay, so how do you submit claims? So once you're actually on the VIA Benefits Accounts portal, um, you've logged in, you followed the instructions that we went over earlier, uh, what you will see is you'll see some simple screens that are asking for some information. Um, so right in the middle of the screen, you can see category is going to be premium. 
Um, so we're, we're submitting a premium expense, and this is going to be for the month of January. Um, as you enter the details on the right, it will put them on the left so that you can confirm that what you entered is actually what's showing up. So date of service is going to be January. The amount is 200 there. Um, and then the provider is going to be Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. And the individual serviced is going to be Ava Smith. So you can see it's very simple. Um, as far as the individual serviced, as you submit additional claims in the future, we will save whatever individuals you have used in the past. So you can just select them from the drop down. And then um, one of the other things that's uh, very important is when you submit a reimbursement request, uh, we need documentation just to show us that your expense is valid and that we're able to pay it. So let's talk a little bit about that. So this is uh, one area where I'll probably put the most focus on, on this call today, um, is to have your supporting documents ready when you're submitting a claim. So there's really going to be five things here that you'll see that we request when you're submitting a claim. So the first thing is going to be that coverage period. Next is going to be the premium type. Third is that provider and carrier. So Humana, AARP, United Healthcare. Uh, next, we need to know who that who who is this premium for? Is it for you? Is it for your spouse? Uh, we would need to see their name on the documentation. And then lastly, what is that monthly amount or what, what is the amount of that premium? So those are uh, the things that we look for on documents. And I'm gonna give you a couple examples of some good documents and then some documents that we were unable to approve as well. Um, just so you can see uh, maybe some examples of what that might look like. All right, so now um, that we are ready, uh, we have our documentation with us. If we click on this upload file button, it's going to take you to this page. And what this page will let you do is if you already have uh, the document, maybe you took a picture of your receipt and you saved it on your desktop on your computer, you can either drag it directly onto this box on your computer, or you can click on this browse for file, and um, then you can pull your document up from wherever you've stored it on your computer. Um, there's multiple different options of the types of files that we can um, accept for documentation. So um, just as long as you have one of those and you're five megabytes or less from a capacity size, um, you'll have no problems just uploading that documentation and then we'll have what we need to process your claim. Okay, so now I have already updated, uploaded my documentation. And after I do that, you'll see that it, it gives you a little preview. So I just uploaded a Humana uh, document and it's going to show me right here that I've completed that and I'm ready to review and submit my claim. And that's all I need to do. Okay, for you mobile users, um, so our, our retiree who's off in Hawaii enjoying the, the sun and the surf out there, um, they can pull out their mobile phone, uh, maybe even while they're on the beach, and um, you'll see it looks very similar to the portal. Um, and one of the things that's even extra handy on the mobile application is you can take a picture right there as you're submitting. So first you'll go in and enter all the same details, uh, but then when it gets to the documentation section, um, you can either pull a receipt from your phone or you can access the camera on your phone and just take a picture right there um, so that you can submit that to us. Um, and I know this is a very popular submission method because it's very easy to do to take a picture with your phone. Okay, so what are some types of examples of the, the type of acceptable documents that we generally see for premium expenses. Um, so there's various things that we will get, um, and you're probably familiar with most of these. So the first one would be a premium statement. Um, another very common one is the annual social security benefit award letter, uh, maybe a notice of Medicare payment due, uh, explanation of benefits, itemized receipts. That's exactly the types of things that, that we do see. Um, and what I would say as far as the types of things that we need on your documentation, this matches what we talked about before. So we're always gonna look for that coverage period, the premium type, the provider and, or carrier, the individual serviced 
as well as the premium amount. Uh, the last item on here, I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, sometimes people may pay for their entire years of coverage ahead of time. Um, and if you do that, we can reimburse you for the entire year. Uh, we just require that you give us that proof that you have actually paid in full. So that proof of payment is only needed if you've paid ahead off into the future. If you're paying, if you're just submitting for any past months or current month, we're able to pay without you showing us proof that you paid. But you, if you do want to submit for future months um, or submit for a quarter or maybe half year for the entire year, uh, we, we do need to see that proof of payment. So that being said, let's jump in and look at a couple of documents. So the first one I'm gonna show you here is a social security benefit statement. So a couple things about this. Uh, first of all, coverage period is gonna be 2021. The premium types are listed down here. So Medicare Part B, Medicare prescription drug premiums. The carrier, uh, we'd consider that Medicare or social security. The individual service is actually right here. We just blacked it out um, for privacy reasons. And then the amounts are going to be right here, also blacked out for privacy reasons. So this is all just to say, this is a great supporting document. Um, this is all that we would need and we would be able to reimburse all of 2021 um, if someone had submitted this today. Okay, here's another document. And uh, this is also a, an, a good example. So if you're looking at this one, uh, this one meets our criteria for processing. So first thing you'll see down here, we'll go through the five things again, is gonna be the coverage period. Next is going to be the, um, the premium type, and we can tell that this is medical. Then we're going to have the carrier or provider, which is AARP, United Healthcare. The individual service is actually right here, and we've just blacked it out for the purposes of this uh, presentation. And then finally, the amount is right here too. Um, and we've blacked that out for the presentation. But all in all, this is a great document. And again, we are ready to process this and reimbursement will be on the way. All right, so let's say that someone just sent in this document. So they went into their mobile application and they submitted a reimbursement request. Um, and But this is all that they sent to us. Uh, the problem with this document um, and it looks like this could be a um, maybe a screenshot from maybe a, a bank statement or something like that. It does not tell us who the payment was for. Um, so this could have been for the retiree. It could have been for their spouse. Um, I can be certain it was probably for one of those two, uh, but I can't just guess. I need to actually see the person's name um, in order to be able to process a reimbursement request. So that's why this one is not good or it's not enough, it does not meet enough of the criteria for us to be able to reimburse. Next, you'll see here, this is an actual uh, bank statement. So very similar to the last one, uh, this is going to be missing um, who the payment was for, as well as the coverage period. So bank statements are often a good way to show us that you've actually paid for a premium. So a lot of times if those are submitted along with like a, a the statement from the insurance company showing your coverage, then that does meet the criteria that we need. But if you just submit a bank statement, it's not going to have the who the actual payment was for, so that won't be enough documentation. All right, so if we're talking about out-of-pocket healthcare expenses, so no longer talking about premiums, it's very similar in what we request, but it's a little bit different. So I'll just go over how that varies. So the first thing on here for an out-of-pocket healthcare expense, there'll be a date of service. So if it was a, a product that you purchased, it'd be the date that you purchased it. If it was a doctor's office visit, it would just be the date of that visit. Um, so we would look for that. And then we're gonna look for the expense category. We're going to want a description of service. Um, so what was it that you that took place that you're requesting reimbursement for? We're going to want to know the provider or carrier. So did you go to Dr. Smith? Was the provider AARP, et cetera? And then just like with the premium request, we need to know who was the individual serviced. And then lastly, uh, we will definitely need to know the amount 
for an out-of-pocket expense. And even more specific than just the amount, we're wanting to know uh, what amount did you have to pay? So if you had a $2,000 healthcare bill, uh, but your responsibility was $100, we would wanna see where it shows that your responsibility is 100, so we can reimburse that $100. So with that being said, let's take a look at some good supporting documentation. So here, just talking, uh, starting from the top on what we look for in a, in, in a supporting document, you can see the visit date. That'll be the date of service. So 4-23-2019. Down here, we have a description. So that will meet our criteria for that element. Then the provider is going to be up here, the Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. We have the individual service right here, it's Eric. And then we also have the amount owed, which was down here, $25. So this is solid documentation. And this is all that we need if this person had submitted this documentation along with their mobile application or, uh, or website visit to submit a claim. We would be able to reimburse that and get that payment on the way. All right, so here is an example of an out-of-pocket expense where maybe we did not get all of the details that we need. And actually, we didn't get very many of the details that we need. So this looks like someone just gave us a printout of their checking account, um, and they tried to submit for $15 uh, from the, uh, that, the Meyer towards the bottom. So the problem with this is that we, we don't have who it was for and what services were rendered. So we'd be unable to send a reimbursement tied to this one. Okay, so where can you find a list of eligible expenses? So we make that very easy for you. So if you're on our portal, um, you can actually click over to the bottom right and you will see a link for view eligible expenses and that will pull that right up for you. All right, one thing that, uh, that is important here, so I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about this as well, is that um, for many of you, you have both an HRA and a RICA plan. And if that is the case, uh, we do need you to tell us which plan we're going to reimburse from. Uh, we can't guess. Uh, we really need you to tell us which plan it comes out of. So as far as our reimbursement process and the payment order goes, from our main page, what you would do is you select Get Reimbursed, um, similar to what we just walked through about 10 minutes ago. Um, if you only have an HRA or RICA, your reimbursement request is going to be paid from that account. But if you have both, you need to tell us which account you wish to be paid, including from your HRA. Um, and then when your HRA is exhausted, you can have it come out of your RICA. However, if you submit for a claim manually, and I'll, I'll actually show you the paper claim form, without telling us the desired account, we are going to deny that because we're not going to guess which account it can come from. So I'll show you a picture of that in a minute here. Now, selecting which account it comes from is actually very easy. So at the end of the process that we talked about earlier, um, you would actually get a box that will come up and show you pay from which account. So you can elect HRA, RICA, or HRA and then RICA. So it's completely up to you. Those are your choices. Okay, so what, what happens for HRA? Um, if you've submitted a reimbursement request, how can you check the status? Um, how does all of that work? So when your reimbursement requests are paid, VIA Benefits Accounts is going to notify you, typically via email, and make an explanation of payment available online. Um, so the reimbursement request is going to appear as VIA Benefits in your direct deposit account. So if any of your reimbursement request is denied or not approved, VIA Benefits will give you an explanation of unpaid expenses via email or mail, depending on your notification preferences. So if we need additional documentation or maybe you submitted uh, one of those receipts that didn't give us everything that we would, we would need, uh, we would send you um, an email or mailing based on your preferences. And you know, you may need to take action. So in the case where maybe you submitted a document but it didn't have the five things we need, um, all you would need to do in that case for HRA 
is come back to our portal and provide us with that additional documentation, and then we can reprocess your claim. Um, another point to make is that let's say that you're coming to the end of your HRA balance that was provided to you in your allocation for the year. Um, if you had, let's say, $100 left in your HRA for the year, but you submitted a request for that we would have been able to approve for $200, we will approve the 100 and send that out to you. And then if you get future funding in your HRA, typically the beginning of the next year, we would pay out the other $100 of that request at that time. Okay, and here what you're going to see is when you're on our portal, um, you can see where you can actually get more information about each reimbursement request that you've submitted. So in the activity section, um, you'll see a summary of all of your activity, and it'll show one line for each, each reimbursement request. You can actually click on one of these to get all of the details about that request. Um, so for this one in particular, you can see this February 11th expense, that would be an example of something that was awaiting the RICA process. So you've submitted it, and now it's going through that process where we're validating the balance, um, looking to get you that reimbursement. And then this is one where it says paid. That's an example of a payment that has already gone out to you. So um, you can actually go in there and look at the details. Um, then you'll see here, you'll see a download button. And I'll advance to the next slide. Uh, we give you the capability to download all of your uh, reimbursement requests that you've ever submitted to via benefits accounts uh, for your reference. So you can save that in your files um, and it's easily accessible at any time. So any requests that have come through our portal uh, would be able to be downloaded at any time. Okay, so the next thing to talk about is uh, Medicare Part B. So uh, we do automatically pay Medicare Part B uh, for those that want it. So what I'll say about that is that your account includes a handy health plan auto pay feature, uh, which is going to automatically process a Medicare Part B premium reimbursement request, and then deposit that payment in the account that you set up for direct deposit monthly. So you, you don't have to take any action for us to do this, um, except for setting up direct deposit. And we'll talk about that in a couple slides from here. Uh, but we will automatically do this every month. Um, now, there's some people that don't want this automatic payment. So maybe uh, you look at your account as a holiday bonus account where you'd rather uh, just submit one request towards the end of the year and they get all of your money at the end of the year. You have the option to do that as well. And uh, now, if you want to do that, uh, what we need you to do is to come out to our portal and actually turn auto pay off. So I'll show you how to do that right here. So when you come into your portal account, um, right on the top hand side, you will see health plan auto pay is on. That is a toggle button. So all you need to do is click on that and then you'll get a warning message that's going to come off. So it's gonna tell you that if this feature is turned off, you may choose to have premium reimbursements paid from your account by submitting an online reimbursement request. So we're no longer going to pay you monthly automatically because you have turned auto pay off. Um, and then once it's off, you will see on our portal that it, it shows as off. Now you can come back at any time at a later date and turn that back on. And if you turn it on, what is, what is ultimately gonna happen is the next monthly payment you'll start to be picked up again. So it's not gonna pay you any retro Medicare Part B amounts, but it will get you back on that monthly process going forward. Okay, and the claim form, uh, very easy to find the claim form. If you're on our portal, you click on forms here and go to view and download PDF, and you will see it right here. However, I would say that if you're on our portal, looking for the claim form, we would actually suggest that you just fill out the claim directly on our portal to make it much quicker. So if you've already made it to our technology, it's much easier if you just submit it there uh, because that'll streamline the process and then we don't have to wait for mail timing or anything like that. Okay, on a paper claim form, let's take a look at that. So for the paper claim forms, uh, you'll see that it's a lot of the similar information that we showed you earlier 
um, as I was going through the online process. Um, you have to enter some details about yourself so that we can identify you. And then you will see a box below. Uh, we're asking you to give us the information that to process your claim. And then also, just like on the portal, we ask you to tell us which account to pay it from. Um, I will say, if you select no boxes, we're unable to process your claim and it would be denied. Uh, we've also had a couple of people that selected all boxes. And that's also something that we're not able to determine your intent. So please do not check all boxes. Um, and really, when you look at this, there's a section for premium expenses. There's also a section for out-of-pocket expenses here. For either of those requests, though, we will need you to tell us which account it's going to come out of. Okay, so here, after you complete that, you will see um, a little bit of information on the, the back of that claim form. It's going to give you the mailing address that you can mail it to, although that's going to be the slowest way to get a claim to us. Um, if you're spilling out the paper claim form, we'd suggest that you fax it to us. Uh, but then an even easier way to do it is just to not fill out a paper claim form at all and go to viabenefitsaccounts.com or to our mobile application. Okay, so direct deposit. This is a topic, uh, one of the most important topics I wanted to cover today. Um, direct deposit's always going to be the fastest and most convenient way uh, to receive your payments. And that's why it's important to set up your direct deposit information with via benefits accounts as soon as possible. So if you do need to update your, your direct deposit information or your bank account information, the easiest way to do that is going to be on our website or with our mobile application. Um, as far as some stats, across retirees overall, we're sitting right about 40% have set up direct deposit so far. Um, and that is great. Uh, we're, we're happy with that number so far. We're looking for that to increase. Um, and then as far as the payments that we've sent out so far, about 72% of HRA payments have gone out by check. And um, for RICA, only 9% have been by check. Um, and, and then 91% uh, have been by direct deposit. So we are making some progress, uh, but it's definitely something that, that we need you to take action to set up. And the reason we need you to do that is because later on this year, we do plan to go to a direct deposit only setup where we will no longer send checks. Um, so uh, we will give you warning before that happens, but the, the, the best thing you can do to prepare for that is either to go to our portal or to the mobile application today and set up that direct deposit. Um, so once you do set up direct deposit, it takes us a little bit, um, I think it can take about seven days for us to do a pre-note validation to verify that it's a valid direct deposit uh, account. And after that, we'll start sending all your reimbursements via direct deposit. So we really ask you to go in and, and do that as soon as you can. Um, I know when we move to direct deposit only, we will need to make some exceptions. Uh, for instance, if someone lives um, in a foreign country, and they do not have a U.S. bank, uh, we can only direct deposit to U.S. banks. So if you are in that situation, we will make an accommodation for you and continue to send checks. All this to say, more information will be shared later this year on this. Uh, but please, 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 if I could ask one thing of you for this call, uh, please try to go in and set up that direct deposit information as soon as you can. And um, Gordy, I'm seeing that it looks like someone needs to make an announcement at this point. Um, the announcement, we uh, got set up for um, ending our meeting at one o'clock. So if we get kicked out, I sent out a notice to everybody to re-log into a continuation webinar and we can continue there and I'll you know, set that up, take about three or four minutes to get that set up. But I think we're okay so far. All right, thank you, Gordy. We'll continue on, Stephen. Thank you. All right, so what I'm showing you now is just the page on our portal to set up direct deposit. It's very simple. We even give you a picture of a check on where you can find your routing number and bank account number. And um, you just go in, enter all the details. And then, um, like I mentioned earlier, we'll take a little bit of time to do a pre-note validation on direct deposit. And then once we have that set up, um, you'll receive your future reimbursements via direct deposit. 
Okay, lastly, as I close, um, how can you request assistance? Um, so it, on this slide, what I, what I really want everyone as a takeaway from this meeting to know is that VIA Benefits Accounts is here to help you. Um, so we are here um, to help you access your accounts in an easy manner. So who can you contact if you have questions? So first of all, you can access Benefit Connect at fcabenefits.ehr.com. Um, so that's where um, you can actually go for anything about HRA funding or eligibility, including account coverage start dates. You can call that number or go to that, that site. Uh, that site also has a link directly to viabenefitsaccounts.com without having to re-log in. And um, you can see for submitting claims, go to viabenefitsaccounts.com. The accounts part of that is very important uh, because if you go to myviabenefits.com slash FCA or you Google via benefits, that's going to take you to our Medicare enrollment marketplace. So if you start to see anything about different insurance options that might be available, you know you are in the wrong site. Uh, you want to start over and go to viabenefitsaccounts.com. Um, next, you'll see that we have a call center. Um, so our call center is dedicated to helping you out with any questions that you might have. Um, and they're available from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time. And then lastly, we make another option available on our portal. Um, some people don't like to call um, and talk to representatives. They may prefer to send a, send a message to us. Um, and if you do that, um, you can see here on the bottom right-hand side of our portal, you can open a help ticket to send a message to us and we will look into whatever your concern is and then we'll we'll get right back to you uh, within a couple of days with a response um, and hopefully we're able to solve whatever uh, question you might have. So that does take me to the end of, of my presentation. I'm showing this. I know this was stated at the beginning of the presentation, but um, this actual presentation is going to be posted on the NCRO site. Um, so with, with that being said, um, I, can, uh, I can definitely take some questions today. Um, I know I'm, I'm not going to take questions that are very personal to your account, because if that is the case, what I would do is I would ask you to call the call center where they have access to your account and can provide that guidance. But I'm happy to, to answer any general questions about the program, about our portal, about direct deposit, or anything else you might have. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. Very, very, uh, very, very informative. As uh, Stephen said, um, we'd like to keep the, the questions general to the uh, material that uh, Stephen presented. If you do have individual questions, uh, Stephen said, go to VIA Benefits and work with them. If by chance you're not able to resolve the issues through VIA Benefits, you can send an email to us on the insurance committee at INSCOM, that's I-N-S-C-O-M, at ncro.org, NCRO and uh, we can uh, work with the HR department in Auburn Hills and via benefits and work out any uh, particular issues that might be affecting your account. But your first line of defense is definitely going to via benefits. So, Gordy, are there any questions that um, have come across for uh, Stephen? There are some questions either for Stephen or Aaron, whoever can answer this. Um, the first one concerns VIA benefits wanting social security numbers and site security um, recommendations to never send your social security number over the internet. Do you have a comment on that? I, I, I do. And, you know, I, I would say you should always protect your social security number. Um, but our site is fully secure. And, and you, you can be confident that if you enter your social security number into our site, um, first of all, it's only needed at account creation. So it's really just needed um, to do that once because in the future, every time you log in, you'll do so with your, your email will be your user ID. So we do have a secure site and, um, and, and you, you don't have to have concerns about that. I think one other thing I would mention too is that on the paper claim form, you see that we also have asked for social security number there. Um, one thing you could do is if you're, if you're concerned about security there is we are fine if you just put the last four of your social if you're filling out a paper claim form, as long as you provide your name and full address so we can, we can identify your account. Okay, good. Um, the, the next question is how far back can we go to, for submitting expenses? Uh, that's a great question. 
Um, so it is based on what your original eligibility date for HRA or RICA was. So, um, so, so there's no restrictions as far as time to get your claims in. There's, there's no submission deadline for the HRA or RICA. Um, so you can actually submit claims going all the way back, um, all the way back to when you were initially eligible, and, and we will be able to process that for you. Okay. Uh, another question is, in the past, when something was denied, the explanation of what was uh, screwed up was not very clear. Um, is that more obvious now with this new system? Uh, error code 401 is not what I need. It is. So we really do try. If we deny a reimbursement request that, that you have, uh, we have hundreds of different reasons why it might have been denied that a claims processor can select from. And our hope with those reasons is that it gives you the information you need to tell you why it was denied. So just getting that denial should be enough for you to know exactly what action you need to take with your documentation to get us additional documents. Okay. Um, there's a question here to set up direct deposit. Um, where is the tab on your website? And I think that was shown in your presentation. It, it was. It was. And you, you can always get there if you go to the, the profile on the top right hand side as well. So it, it, it is very easy to get to on our portal. And then the next question is another security advice about sending bank account and routing numbers on the internet. I think that's probably the same answer as social security numbers. That's right. So we, we look for that one time to set it up and we store it in a secure manner. And then, um, and then we, we wouldn't ask you for that information again. And I, I would say that all of those details are masked for any of our internal um, employees so that they are not able to see your banking details. It's something once you enter it, we're not able to see it but we work uh, with our bank to get that set up so that we can get your reimbursements to you as fast as possible. Okay, this is a, a more complicated question. Is how can you continue to pay this year's shortfall HRA money from next year's HRA money? Eventually, when you get to the next year in January, your entire money for that year will be paying for the previous year. With no Medicare increase, money will run out in nine years or less. Is this correct? Example, with current Medicare at 170.1 for two people, it will be short this year. And you know, that that is almost a question that I would defer to our, our, our benefit center. But, but what I would say is you are somewhat in control of that. So if you'd prefer to make your money last longer and you don't want to be automatically paid every month for that part B, you do have the option to go and, and take that toggle and turn it to off. And then you actually would be fully in control of the, the reimbursement request that you get out of your HRA. Uh, but I, I know there's also others who find the feature of being able of getting that payment in January from their past claims. Uh, I know a lot of retirees rely on that. So that is definitely a helpful feature that that we we like and we have no plans of changing for the future. I, I think the question is that the money that Stellantis gives us into our HRA will not be fully covering Medicare in the future unless that is increased. And I guess that's a that's a question for Stellantis. Okay. Uh, what is the target date for automatic monthly Medicare payments? Because this this month I received it on the 15th, and I think everyone is different uh, based on my experience. And you know, with this question, what I would say is that we try to get those payments out by the 10th. So I know this month there were a couple of additional days. So the 15th that that sounds about right, but um, we would expect in future months that it it should always come out right around the 10th. It may be a, a day or two before that, uh, but it shouldn't be past the 10th. So, um, so I know we've, we've done this process for two months, for January and February, and our expectation is that in, in March, it's going to be a little bit quicker, and then ongoing, it should always be around the 10th. Uh, the next question, do we have to do direct deposit or we continue to receive checks? And I think you answered that near the end of your uh, presentation, but go ahead and answer it again. 
That, that's right. So we do plan on moving to direct deposit only later this year. So, so right now we are still sending checks to everyone, uh, but we're asking everyone to take action to set up direct deposit. Um, so later this year we can move to direct deposit only. Uh, we will have some exceptions, um, and I mentioned one earlier. If you're living in a in a foreign country, uh, we're unable to direct deposit to a foreign bank. So if that's your circumstance and you can't use a a, a United States bank for your direct deposit, then um, then we would be able to continue to send you checks. But outside of situations like that, our our plan is to move to to fully to direct deposit later this year, and we'll send more information prior to doing so. But um, the best thing that you can do is as we hang up this, this conference today, if you could go set up direct deposit, I will thank you profusely. Okay, the next um, question, what are the IRS implications for, re for reimbursements? You know, your, your reimbursements are not taxed. Um, and as far as that goes, that, that's one of the reasons why we have some rules around you taking the reimbursements out of the accounts. So the fact that you have to send us that documentation that shows us the type of expense so that we can process it, uh, that allows you to have those reimbursements tax-free. So that, I think that's, uh, that's the explanation. Okay, um, the question here, um, Says, will we will we be required to buy our insurance in 2023 through your brokerage? No. Okay, and the last one is maybe for you know Jay or the NCRO board that meets with Stellantis. Uh, can Via Benefits say anything to Stellantis to encourage them to provide COLA for our HRA? Any help is appreciated. Um, and I'm sure we're already, you know, they have meetings with Stellantis every so often. Uh, if Jay or Howard wants to weigh in on that, you know, they can speak. Gordy, I can, I'm on, if, if you got me live, I'm, I can answer that question. Um, yep. Go ahead, Jay. There, there is, we, we ask um, Stellantis, every meeting we have with them, uh, to, uh, look to increasing the HRA uh, and we give them, we have actually made presentations to them and whatever cost of insurance and what and, and the like. And their comment to us is always uh, that it will remain the same. Uh, it is competitive with Ford and General Motors and that's their, that's their position, but we will continue to do that. In terms of COLA, there's, they have again told us that there's no uh, plans for them to increase uh, our our HRA by COLA uh, or pensions by COLA, if that was a question. No, there, there is no, uh, they have no plans to do that. Okay, that's all the questions I've got so far from the uh, web. Um, anybody else have anything that's uh, online here? Anything else to say? Howard, you wanna? Well, um, I think this has been a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, seminar and uh, uh, conference that we've had today with uh, ending up with uh, what we had from Via Benefits. So uh, thank you very much for attending. We still have uh, about 70 people online, which is wonderful. Thank you for sticking around for this uh, presentation. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in a few months in May when it's uh, no more snow on the ground. And uh, hopefully we'll be face-to-face uh, -face over in uh, San Marino and Troy. So, uh, Jay, if you don't have any closing remarks, um, that'll finish our seminar for today.